Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing good. So here today we are with prelims mastery and today we will try to solve some of the prelims based questions uh, regarding uh, first week of December's contemporary and current affairs. All right. So without much further ado, let's begin with the first question. Which of the following statements are correct? The first statement in a fuel cell vehicle, water is the fuel. The second statement says fuel cell vehicle has zero carbon emission. Now pause this video for a while, think about this and then get back. So let's check the answer. Is it option A or B or C or is it D? The answer is B only two. That means only second statement is right. A fuel cell vehicle has zero carbon emission. But however, the first statement is wrong here. The fuel here is not water. The fuel here is hydrogen and oxygen. And these hydrogen and oxygen, when they are put together, all right, they give the byproduct of energy and water. And the same energy is used to run the vehicle. All right. So let's go to the next question. Second one, which of the following are main constituents of e-cigarettes? Now, e-cigarettes and the act to ban it was recently in news, right? So which of the constituents are found in e-cigarettes? Number one, nicotine. Number two, glycerol. Number three, propylene glycol. Now, which of these? Pause the video. Think about this. Let's check the answer. The answer is... See all the above. All the above ingredients are present in e-cigarettes. Nicotine, glycerol and propylene glycol. All right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Which of the following are true about ethics committee of parliament? Now, this ethics committee of parliament was recently in news because of some uproar and misbehavior in Lok Sabha. Okay. And uh, this has already happened uh, previously in Rajya Sabha. So, Ethics Committee was called into the question. So, let's understand which of the following statements are true about Ethics Committee of Parliament. The first statement says, to oversee the moral and ethical conduct of members. The second one says, to prepare a code of conduct for members. The third says, to examine cases concerning the alleged breach of the code of conduct by members. The fourth says to tender advice to members from time to time on questions involving ethical standards. And the fifth statement says in case of breach, they can suspend the member from the house permanently. So what do you think? Which of these statements are true here? Which of the options below are, you know, uh, is the right one here? Let's check the answer. The answer says A, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So all the first four statements are right. However, the last one is wrong because in case of breach, you can't suspend them permanently. You can suspend them only for a uh, limited time period. That means ethics committee can suspend a person with bad behavior or who is, uh, you know, caught, you know, breaching the very uh, ethical code here. He can be suspended for a limited time period okay all right so let's check the next question the fourth one gdp of a country indicates growth only development only both that is growth and development or neither of them what do you think the right answer is a growth only all right now gdp of a country indicates only the growth the economical growth but however it doesn't give us an idea about the overall development happening in the country. Now, this was a debate in Lok Sabha recently as our GDP took a dip, dip to 4.5 percentage. So, as it took a dip, there was this discussion and uh, there are other factors of GDP, I mean, other factors of development which are not included in GDP. So, GDP has its own uh, limitation. It can only give you an economical growth index but not the development index. Okay, the next one. Which of the following statements are correct? First one, Anemia Mukt Bharat strategy is under Poshan Abhiyan. It's a 4 into 4 into 4 strategy targeting 4 age groups with 4 interventions and 4 institutional mechanisms. It aims to reduce anemia prevalence by 3 percent points every year till 2022. So which of the following statements are incorrect? What do you think? Which, which of these options are right options here? Let's check. 
it says d2 only the second one is the incorrect statement however the first and the third statements are right so kindly remember all these things uh, you know to which abhiyan does it belong to and to which ministry now this actually is under the ministry of health and family affairs so please understand health and family affairs or health and family welfare this is a ministry under which this very anemia book uh, mukt bharat strategy comes under okay let's check the next one which of the following statements are correct the first says article 164 allows governor to administer the oath of office and secrecy to the minister the second one says as per the constitution the text of the oath need to be read exactly as it is and little deviation need not be i'm sorry need not be read exactly as it is and little deviations are welcome the first statement or the second statement or both are right here let's check it says a one only only the first statement is right yes as per article 164 governor you know he should administer the oath of office and secrecy to the minister but however you know as per the second statement uh, you know the text of the oath as per the constitution should be read exactly as it is whatever governor you know dictates to the minister he has to uh, you know uh, kind of repeat it and whatever is given you know the text as per article 164 he has to read it out he can't add anything he can't edit anything okay maybe he can uh, pray for uh, uh, the blessings of gods or parents in the beginning but however in the in the, the very core part of the text he can't change it so therefore second statement here is wrong the next one which of the following statements are correct an ex exclusive economic zone that is eez is a concept adopted at the united nations conference on the law of the seas that is un clause and eez or eez can extend to a maximum 200 nautical miles from the territorial sea baseline so which of the options are correct here let's check it says both are correct so an exclusive economic zone is a concept adopted at the third united nations conference on the law of the seas in 1982 and it extends up to 200 miles nautical miles that means 370 kilometers from the baseline of the shore and this was recently in news because chinese vessels were found near the andaman and nicobar islands okay so let's go to the eighth one as recently seen in the news letter of understanding is what is this letter of understanding now it's a document issued to a customer by one bank to another overseas bank to avail short term credit in a foreign currency it's a document issued to a customer by one bank to another bank domestically to avail short term credit in a local currency a document issued to a customer by one bank to another overseas bank to avail long term credit in a foreign currency and this says a document issued to a customer by one bank to another bank domestically to avail long term credit in a local currency so which of the following statements are true about letter of understanding let's check it says option a so this was in news because of the nirav modi you know punjab national bank scam okay now letter of understanding is a document issued to a customer by one bank to another overseas bank to avail short term credit in foreign currency so if somebody wants to get uh, take credit from the bank it actually issues a document to a customer now he has to produce that document to a a branch of the same bank or an another overseas bank which is in the you know in the, in the other country and there if he produce the same document he'll get the credit in the currency of that country of that foreign country so this is letter of understanding so let's check the next one which of the following are the indian scorpion class submarines all right the first one khanderi karni vela vakshir vagir so which of these let's check it says a all of the above so kindly remember the names here indian scorpion class 
submarines. The next one. Which of the following statements are correct? Mazagao Dock Shipbuilders Limited is a public sector unit. And the second statement says it is under the Ministry of Defense. Now, this is the last question of this part. So, let's see how many of you would get all the, you know, questions right here. 10 out of 10. Okay, there's no pressure as such. Even if you, you know, lose out on few things, few questions, that's, that's equally fine. You, know, you are here to learn, right? So, which one of these statements are right here? Let's check. It says both Mazagao Dock Shipbuilders Limited is a public sector unit and it is under the Ministry of Defense. So all the warfare ships and other vessels are built in Mazagao Dock Shipbuilders Limited. It is close to Mumbai. All right. So let's end the first part of this uh, first week of December's prelims mastery and uh, tomorrow. You will, you know, we'll continue with 10 more questions from 11th to 20th in the second part. I hope, you know, you, you know, you, you got an opportunity to learn a lot more things with these 10 questions. And do not forget to leave in the comment section as in how many questions did you get right out of 10. I'll be, you know, very excited to know about that. Okay. So do not forget to like this video, share this with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that. Take care. See you tomorrow.